Hello, it's Eve, the Creative Curator. Welcome back to my channel. I really love the colour of this one as well. It's 100% cotton. I purchased it for 13 euros. There's a lot of fabric here because it has these big pleats and it also has the most amazing deep pockets, which I love. <laughs> So hopefully I'll be able to keep those. They are lined in the self fabric, not the lining fabric. The lining is nasty. So again, I'm going to be removing that. I couldn't find any sign of a label, which makes me think it might be handmade. Like the constriction technique is, it doesn't appear to be mass manufactured. Let me show you what I mean. Can you see that the finishing, it's been pressed open, but the raw edge has been finished with a, a zigzag stitch not overlocking or surging. Yeah, look, you can see, if I look at the pocket, you can see it has completely raw edge, like that hasn't even been finished. So it is a handmade skirt. Somebody made it very nicely. They put a horrible lining in it, but the cotton fabric itself is beautiful. And actually I'm looking at it now and I can see the additional details, like the waistband has had, there wasn't quite enough clearly and they've had to patch a section on so it's a very sweet very lovely the pleats are lovely on it but it's not quite what i'm looking for i did try to wear it here is a video of me wearing it it looks ghastly on me i actually ripped the lining pulling it over my hips because i'm a lot chunkier than this skirt was intended for and it has a really nice simple matching zipper so we'll repurpose that as well so yeah let's see what we can do <laughs> So I'm really excited about this project. I started off by removing the waistband using my stitch on ripper picker thingy. It was a long and slow process, so I didn't record the whole thing. And then I just removed the nasty lining from within. What I want to do now is measure how much fabric, because you can see where I've taken the waistband off, all the pleats have come undone because they weren't tacked into place. Um, so now I get an idea of how wide the fabric is. So we're 47. That's CB to waist. We're going to ignore the pocket section because we want to try to keep the pocket. So then pocket to pocket is 79. We'll call it 79. And then, oh, actually it's longer. I don't think I had unrolled that pleat. Hold on, let's try again. Yeah, okay, so that's 93. That's better. We've got a bit more to play with. And then the back, center back to the other waist side seam. And I'm expecting it to be approximately the same. 45-ish. We'll call it 45. So in total, and what's the length? And I'm working in centimeters because that's just how I do it. It already has a double rolled hem, double fold hem, sorry. 77. Now, initially my plan was to make a pair of shorts from this. And I could definitely do that now because of the amount of width we have. So let's just add up what we've got. 185. So if I have my waist, my low waist, where I would normally wear shorts, I'm at 114. So that gives me plenty to do an elasticated waist, actually. And if they're 77 centimeters long, I'm just going to do a quick measurement on me. Well, actually, I think I could probably get away with making like a little summer play suit. I think there's enough fabric there or a little two piece like a top and a pair of shorts. So I'm going to trim down. I think I'm going to take apart the side seams because that will keep the center back seam in place with the zipper, which is going to be handy. So we'll leave that there for now and we'll take apart the side seams to see what we've got. Can you see how small that stitch length is? It's tiny. Okay, we have the pieces are separate this is where we're at so currently the two pockets are still attached the inseam pockets those are pretty easy to remove if i decide to do so they've been top stitched on the one side as you can see um so i can easily remove those if i need to in terms of width this is what we're left with a nice big piece of fabric so my thinking is let me zoom you out if i use so this was the back skirt section originally if i keep this as the back skirt then I can have a center back zip opening and I'll cut it in half along here. So the, the length of it, if you like, let me just fold it over so you can see. And I'll create a rolled, a double folded hem like we have here. Actually, no, I won't because that would go on the bottom because I don't know if the print is directional or not. I haven't looked at that aspect. Oh, look at the terrible pattern matching. Oh, decisions. <laughs> 
So if I have this as the center back, if I cut across here, sewed up the side seams and created like a mini skirt, I could then use the section. I take the pockets off of here and I put them in the side seams. We have an elasticated waist that's then attached um, almost like a halter neck. So I have a bodice gathered at the waist coming up over the boobs and around the neck or just a simple V-neck like this, but on the front and the back and then tying at the back, simple cotton top. Oh, I'm so undecided, I don't know. Okay, I've actually removed the pockets because of the terrible pattern matching on the center back, which you can see here. Um, let me just zoom you out. So you can see this terrible pattern matching, it's annoying me and I don't want to put this on the center front skirt. I've also realized I can't do a play suit because I would need to have the back and front rise coming across onto the opposite sides, which means I wouldn't be using the zipper. Yeah, I'm still not sure what I'm doing, but I have taken off the inseam pockets so those are fine we can repurpose those they are a little bit gnarly but that's fine they will work and they're really nicely sized pockets as well see so that's a winner we're going to keep those and move on to the next set okay so i've just wrapped the one half around a leg from the side seam coming in towards the center front and actually i think there's enough width if I ignore the fact that there's the zipper in it and, you know, we just forget that I want it to use the zipper, I think there's enough width from here to here to go around my leg under my bum and get the rise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the pattern that I like for my DIY jeans and just check that against this. So these are my patchworked denim joggers which I self-drafted and I love them and I wear them all the time. I have an article on my website called DIY jeans and it's those. I keep meaning to digitize it but I haven't got around to it yet. So we are looking for because all we want is the rise sections. That's the front leg to see whether we can get like a leg, a front leg and a back leg from the section. It wouldn't be as fitted. There we go. Back leg back leg right so we need those two let's start with those obviously i need to give it a press and i don't have any concerns about shrinking let me zoom you out because the fabric has clearly been used and worn and loved so what we want is <laughs> okay it's just up to the seam allowance amazing so actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to trace these sections off there's a really i've got a really long back rise i think mine's like 47 centimeters my back rise and let's go from like the bumish area 33 i'm just gonna put it on me yes yeah, so that side seam so actually if i want it not to be too fitted i would need a little bit more i mean i could ex i could open it up a centimeter and still be okay and we're not going to worry about the grain line because we're refashioning you're never going to get it perfect like if i try to get it on the straight grain i'm not going to be able to get one pattern piece oh i might <laughs> I could almost. And then actually I could come straight down and I could have little roll-ups. <gasps> oh, so many options. Okay, I'm going to ponder on this. So what I've done is I've actually, I've put on my jeans. I'm wearing them now. You can't see. Can you see? Woo, here they are. And actually, so I've measured down the side seam for the back section. I've also measured the inseam for the back section. I've included two centimeters here for a seam allowance, um, a hem allowance rather. And this I've done 30 centimeters plus two centimeters for a hem allowance. Now I need to curve them across. I think actually this I might straighten a bit anyway, but I just want to mark on the pattern so that there's no confusion if I were to remake these. So I'm just going to create a kind of natural curve. Well, that's quite a nice curve actually, isn't it? I'm just going to mark it in very lightly. And then I'm going to peel back my panels. This is me totally going like, I can't be bothered to trace out a pattern scenario. And we'll do that later then. So this is doubled over. So I've got two layers here and I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to go straight across because I might straighten it off rather. And then straight up that in seam. I'm just going to naturally curve that outwards. Now I'm going to get my scissors because I'm really concerned about cutting the zip because I want to save the zip. Okay, then I should be able to do the other section like so. Oh, sorry, I think that was off screen. So now we have a shorts back panel. So cute. 
<laughs> okay, I'm now finding out the front pattern pieces that I'm going to need. And these were constructed with an interesting pocket detail, so I'm not quite sure which ones I'm going to need. That's my pocket. So that front leg inside. I think it's just this and this. And then I'll extend it. So this isn't a functioning zipper. I elasticated the waistband because they were quite loose on me. So I'm hoping that these will be fine. Yeah. I think I need to add an extra centimeter. Yeah. So we need a centimeter added on there. That's fine. And a centimeter added on there. So a centimeter and a centimeter. And then the length. So I've cut this to be 30 centimeters on here plus two. So 32 centimeters. Take me down to here. So I'm going to need to add. Oh, that's the wrong way. One, two, three, four centimeters to this. So my mark on my front leg hem, including the hem allowance, is sitting in line with the actual existing hem at the moment. My decision needs to be whether I keep that hem intact or because I want to open up the front because I'm going to have a center back um, opening. I think I'm going to have an elasticated front and I want it to be gathered along the entire front section. So I want to add as much width as possible simply because I think it'll be more comfy rather than having it super fitted. Maybe I'm going to unpick the hem from the original so that I can roll it out and have a bit more to play with. I've pressed out the hem so that it's still a bit creased but it's going to get folded up anyway. So now I can go ahead and put these into position and I wanted to have some space in between just so that I can gather the front just so that I have it for continuity purposes. I'm just going to square a line and that's just so that I can then so I can probably add 12 centimeters. Super. So I've added 12 centimeters in between and I've kept that horizontal line on point. So now I can pin everything in and then I should be able to extend. You'll have to excuse the noise outside. There's more work again. Oh, I think it was like three or four centimeters, wasn't it? Four centimeters. Okay. Uh -huh. So four centimeters. This is where it gets interesting because I don't have, I haven't extended the pattern piece. So I'm going to have to mark directly on the fabric, which I would never normally do. <laughs> these don't have any patch pockets on the front like slash pockets because I am going to be placing the side seam pockets back in which I've lost track of but they're here somewhere so that's one of the po side pockets it should just fit nicely and then we need two because obviously okay so where we've extended it out I'm just going to pull that back in Okay, super job. So now we have our front pieces as well. I actually could have done away without this because it's gonna have a seam at the center front. But there we go. Okay, so as you can see, the front pieces are cut out. I have removed that step from the center front because this will be a seam. I've also pressed out all the folds and removed any of the stitching that was left from their previous use of the two side seam pockets. These are going to go on the side seam and you can see if I line it up, there is just enough space for a hem. Oh, you can't see that. On the bottom. One thing I have noticed since cutting them out, I'll have to bring it up so that you can see it. There is a small tear in the fabric here. And that's right on the front area. So I'm going to have to put a little patch on the underside, maybe some hand stitching just to prevent that from ripping further. I have extended this by 12 centimeters, as you saw, so that I can gather in the front section, which would make it less noticeable. Okay, we're going to start by sewing the front center front seam. So that's done. I'm going to use a one centimeter seam allowance and I'm using a 2.5, almost three centimeter, uh, three millimeters stitch length. I'm also going to attach the side seam pockets that I had removed from the skirt. And for this, I'm aiming to stitch in the original line so that it doesn't show on the right side. 
And that should be about right. And then I'm going to, I say retain stitch. So that is one skirt pocket, inseam pocket, added in and understitched into place. So that could be pressed. I should have pressed as I went, but I didn't because sometimes I can't. Well, actually, do you know something? It's about 28 degrees in my sewing room at the moment. I don't want the iron on as well. It's scorching. So that's a nice, simple side seam pocket. Now I'm going to sew the other version down, the other side. And then we'll understitch this as well. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got. Okay, having realised that I have not pattern matched the front, I've just double checked the fabric and realised it would have been impossible anyway. We're now going to continue with the centre back of the shorts. So currently it's going to be an elasticated front. So in theory, I have enough space to like width around the waistband to not even need a zipper. But because I'm still not sure if I'm doing a play suit or not, we're just going to go with it as if we are adding a zipper. I've got darts in the back for a little bit more fittedness. Probably take a little bit of that off because at the moment it's going to be not as fitted. So I'm going to take them in by a centimetre. And this is not what you should do at home, by the way. I'm winging it <laughs> because I know that I these are slightly lo less width on the back than they should be. I didn't add enough seam allowance to the pattern previously and then I forgot to do it again now. And then I'll do the same on the other side. To be fair, I'm probably going to put patch pockets on the back. So the darts won't be seen much anyway. And now we can attach the back section to the front. Let's pin that together. So this is the front section. You can see pieces have been sewn together. We're going to want the right side of the front facing up. And I've still got to repair this section as well. I'm just going to put a little patch on that actually. Or I forget and then we'll just sew that in place when we're back on the machine in a moment. I probably should do it from the right sides but for now that will suffice. Right sides together and we have the crotch seam that needs doing. Now I haven't finished my raw edges. I'm undecided whether I'm going to sew. Well the thing is as well I need to decide if I'm putting the zipper in. <laughs> So at the moment, I not, what I normally would do is I would zigzag the raw edges and then I would stitch them down as a welt seam or I would press them open. I could press them open, but I don't know what I'm doing with the zipper yet. I could, normally with the inseam, I would do a felled seam so that it was completely enclosed. But again, I don't know how the adjoining seams are going to finish. So at the moment, we're just kind of pottering along and doing what we're doing. So we're just going to put the side seams together, I think and then we'll see what size waistband we need to create. This is the pocket for the side seam. You can see I've pinned it in place. So it's not gonna do what I want it to do. So we will unpin it. And then we want this to line up here. So the pocket with the fabric of the side seam back like so. And we're gonna pin all the way down here up until we reach that mark from before and you can see we do have a um where the edge has been snipped in the notch so we're going to be really careful around there which is probably why we will overlock the raw edges and then we would finish by stitching these seams together as well oh it's a little bit off can you see that it's off by a centimeter that's either my measuring or that is me incorrectly sorting this so we're going to unpick that We'll unpin it and we'll decide on that later. We'll get this one pinned and stitched first. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Remove the holding pins. Align the front pocket. Well, it would be the back pocket actually to the back section. I prefer to sew from this side of the fabric. So we'll pin it like that as well. I'm just trying to be careful not to manoeuvre the fabric too much because I don't want it to fray any more than it already is. I mean, this fabric is in really good condition considering it's been like, you know, it was pre-owned. I'm refashioning it into something else or some things else. It's in good condition, so. I only noticed one small issue, that tear on the front section. And then we're going to come all the way down as close as we can get. There we go. And then our next job is to sew down those two seams. So we'll do that now. We are sewing the side seams to the pockets. Okay, 
now we can align sorry i'm doing this on the fly as it were now that i have that in place i really just want to stitch it in there but that's not going to work because it will show on the right side yes that's a centimeter too long that's fine we'll just trim that we're going to sew that now so that that one is done okay i'm just making sure my one centimeter seam allowance is lined up so the good news is we have one closed side seam the bad news is none of the raw edges are finished but we will deal with that afterwards with the overlocker oh this is the center back that we haven't decided on yet we've left it pinned in place now we're going to do the other side seam pocket i think that's about right it's so much easier when you're sewing from scratch and not repurposing something but you know right now we're going to do the same thing yeah, we're going to do a quick repair on that ripped section. So I think I'm going to start and I'm just going to do zigzag stitches back and forth, back and forth. Put the patch underneath and I've got pins holding it in place. I'm literally just freehanding this as if it was like petal shapes and lines. So it's just a, a nice, simple, it looks almost like it's part of the design. Okay, I think I've made a decision. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew up the center back. I'm going to unpick the center front and I'm going to do a centered zipper. So it's going to be visible, but I mean, it will be possibly invisible. Maybe I can make it invisible, but at least it's going to be at the center front. Okay, I've put in these pleats to take out the 12 centimeters that I added in for the elasticated waist. I'm going to make them a little bit narrow. I think they're going to be, instead of being three centimeters either side, I think they're going to be two centimeters, just because I'm not sure that it's going to fit me. And then I'm going to put a deeper waistband on, but it is going to be a elasticated. So I've got a waistband on at the moment, and you can see it's not massively elasticated, but it has just deepened the existing waistline of the shorts that I'm wearing now. The reason I'm doing it like that is because of this. Let me show you. So this is the Seguro set here. I haven't purchased it. It's from the Friday Pattern Company. It's one that everyone's going mad about. And it's so basic. Like, it's just a kimono style um, sleeve grown on with a deep V. And this I can pattern cut like in a hot minute. But you can see how the separates, they both have elasticated waistbands. So my shorts will be, these are higher waist. Like if you look at it on a human. You can see that they're sitting at her natural waist and this sits just below the bust. There we go. So mine's going to look different because I'm not buying a pattern, uh, not when I can make it so easily. I really like how this looks and I've looked on the Instagram and they're really funky and I think actually what I'll do is then, so I think it will look really cute as like a two piece but then I can also wear them separately if I want it to. So that's what I'm going to do because also the problem with play suits is you put a play suit on, you need to go to the toilet and you've got the whole bother of getting it undone and if I have a centre back zip it's fine because I could just take it off, pull it down and it sits on the front of me but I hate going to the toilet and having it all sitting behind near the toilet bowl and stuff like that's not going to be fun that's not gonna be nice so this is my plan so i'm trying to show you <laughs> what it looks like without being indecent the problem i have is i was worried it wouldn't fit as in i wouldn't be able to fit in because i'd made a change to the pattern when i made my diy jeans and so i took these i'm, I'm not doing an elasticated elasticated waist now because it's just going to bunch up too much over my tummy so instead i put in these pleats so the excess that i'd put in the 12 centimeters I have taken out eight centimeters between this pleat and this pleat. And then the darts on the back, you can see I haven't um, done the inseam yet, but the darts on the back, they were four centimeters in total and I made them two centimeters in total. So I've gained an extra two for, I think eight centimeters in total and it's too big now. <laughs> yeah, but I, look, doesn't it just look lovely? Like the print, I feel like it would have made a really cool short pleated min mini skirt actually. I really love the colors, it's so pretty um so yeah i need to get ready and go out so i will continue this tomorrow okay i've done a thing and i got my overlocker out i have the brother lock 1034d and i almost never use it my thread is about to run out i found out a spool i only have one spool so i don't know what we'll do with that i've just degreased it 
um, defluffed it because it had a lot of muck on the inside, which I've now removed. And I'm going to use it on the center back seam. And I'm going to use it on the center front seam. And then I'm going to use it on the inseam. And by then I will need to change the threads. So let's do this. I haven't used this in so long. <laughs> It's really loud as well, so I'll skip through that bit. Okay, and that's how my overlocker works. So it's nicely set up. It's got a lovely finish. As you can see, I'm, I don't use it very often. I think this is maybe like the second time since I moved to the Netherlands that I've used it. I used it for David's trig shorts, and I'm using it for this. So there you go. Let's do the center front seam as well while we're here. I still have some thread left. I don't have enough to do the entire waistband, the waistline I mean, but I know I have enough to do the crotch, so let's do that. We're going to do the raw edges. Do I have enough to do it? Oh, it's going to be touch and go. Let's do it. So this is the front one. We'll do it going towards this side. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Let me show you. Right, I'm gonna re-thread it and then I'll come back and continue. Okay, so I'm doing that thing that I do when I do the job I'm supposed to do after I'm supposed to have done it. So what I mean by that is now that I have my overlocker slash serger out, I'm gonna go and overlock all my raw edges. Being very careful, of course, not to chop anything off. I'm gonna come up this side seam and I'm going to deal with the pocket situation. Oh my gosh, I hope I don't trash this now. Okay, that just protects it a little bit more. We'll tie off all the scraggins at the end. So now we're going to start from here. We're going to go all the way around to prevent it from stretching out and fraying any further. Now I have done a stay stitch all the way around, so it should be fine. And by that, I mean everything should be facing in the right direction, all the existing stitch lines. This is more about preventing it from fraying. So now I am ready to sort the waistband. I've got two separate pieces of fabric which I've cut from the other skirt section. These are approximately 12 and a half centimeters from here to here and I just cut them the full length. What I'm going to do is sew one side to the other then I'm going to match to see the length of the shorts and then we will create a tube and insert a piece of elastic. I have created this elastic the same width as my low waist section so that once I overlap by about two centimeters, it will be just on the slightly snug side, a little bit snug. So I'll stitch down here to secure that and then I'll show you how I make the waistband. Okay, so now I need to interfuse this interfacer with some fusible interfacing so that it has a little bit more structure before I assign the elastic to it. Okay, so I have pressed in the pleats. Aren't these just absolutely gorgeous? I think these might be one of the fav my favourite things I've ever made. <laughs> I have prepped the waistband. Now, with the ones I'm currently wearing, I don't think I actually interfaced. So we're going to prep. I'm going to sew along here. We're going to sew with a one centimeter seam allowance. And then once that's done, we'll turn it through and we're going to sort the elastic. So I'm also going to sew the elastic now and overlap that. And in theory, the elastic is just slightly smaller. Um, and then we'll attach it and I'll show you how to do that. Now that I've got my waistband sewn both ends, I need to press things in half and create the fold lines. So I'll just put that, that on there, that on there. And then what I will do is fold everything in half 
and then just press. And I'm going to do that the whole way around. And there we have a prepped waistband. I'm not going to worry about turning anything under because we're not going to stitch in the ditch or anything like that. I'm going to insert the elastic and then attach this. In order to put the elastic in, I want to quarter it up, although technically I'm not quartering. My side seams are not a quarter of the way round, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to mark a pin for the centre front, one for the centre back, one on this bend for a side seam, and the same on this side. And the reason we do it like this is because it makes it easier to put them in. Now I've got my waistband. The two seams are the side seams. The larger part was the front, so I should have a double notch here. For the center back can you see that so i'm going to insert upside down like this <laughs> so this is my center back notch that's going to go in there i'm just going to wedge it in as far as it'll go and then i'm going to seal it with a pin i'm going to do the same with the center front and there should be a notch on here as well there it is we're going to line that up there with the pin grab the pin and then you know line so you can see now the difference let me bring that into view so my side seam sits a little bit under, it's here, but I've lined this up to be my side seam. So I'm just going to move this down about a centimeter and then I'm going to insert that to line up with the side seam. We are going to crunkle the fabric because the fabric circle is bigger than the elastic circle that we've created. Don't worry about that. And then we're just going to pin that into place. Same thing that we already did. And we're going to repeat it this side as well. So we're going to insert that and then take the pin and secure. And there we have it. The job now is to sew that. We're going to do multiple channels, starting around the centre, I think, or perhaps this end, just to capture everything. It's not going to be massively elasticated, as you can see. It will just be a little bit of elastication, but that's fine. That's all I need. So I'm going to start at the centre back, just because I like, if there's going to be any mess, I like it to be at the back. So I'm going to sew one centimetre from the edge. And all I'm doing there is holding the fabric taut and then it's curving around. This is where we do start to get a little bit of gather, but again, it's not going to be much. As you can see, it's almost not even worth doing. Okay, so you can see that hasn't really made an awful lot of difference. It has just elasticated it a slight amount, as you can see. Just enough to put it in, but not a massive amount. So to make it interesting, we're also going to find the end where we started, or the beginning where we started, here. And we're just going to do the same thing halfway th through. And then, I think I'm just going to leave it at that for now, and then we'll attach it. So let's do that next. So we're going to attach the waistband to the actual and the short part goes at the back and all I'm going to do is pin the few sections together because we're going to overlock it so we're looking for the double notch at the back and that's where my center back is going to go and this shouldn't really do any gathering because we've already gathered the fabric slightly with the elastic this is merely a case of having something that would hold the shorts upright because I didn't want to put a zipper in and spoil the center front and yeah, it just made sense to do it this way. I'm really excited about these. I think they're going to look amazing. <laughs> they're super fun. And I'm so lucky that I found the skirt, the original skirt that I have upcycled these from. Or refashioned, you could say, I guess. Because it doesn't look anything like what it originally looked like. Okay, we are ready to sew it up. Let's do this. Okay, we're starting at centre back. Oh no, I didn't pay attention to the way that I was applying and look, I've done the reverse on the front. So I've got white top stitching everywhere, which is really annoying. That's supposed to be pink stitching. So I'm gonna have to unpick all of that white stitching. Okay, so I've tried them on, they fit really cute. Some changes I do wanna make is, as I mentioned before, I just wanna bar tack or secure this in place because I'm really concerned that it's quite open. 
and I don't want anything I put in my pocket to fall out. So I'm just going to raise that up a few inches. I'm just going to pin that in place because that's a little bit too open for me. I'll do a proper measurement to make sure that's accurate, but then that's much better. Could possibly even come up a little bit more, but so that's the first thing I need to do on both pockets. I'm going to go over the top stitching of the waistband. This actually isn't supposed to be visible, so I might sew a proper seam allowance, joining them together. As you can see, there's not an awful lot of gathered happening, which is fine because I don't want them to be too gathered, but I do need some detailing adding here. So I will either unpick the white or because I think the elastic is pretty much caught in place. Or I might sew over the white. So the pink here, the pink in the middle and the pink here. But they're really cute on. One other problem I have is I think because the way I've bar tacked the pleats into place. Can you see those? It's making the fabric gather slightly when I put them on. Because I have a bit of a belly protrusion. It pulls the fabric. So I end up with all, not a wedgie, but just a little bit of a fanny fitted shape around the crotch area. But to be fair, I think it's only me that would actually notice that. I need to give them all a good press again. Um, and that's my little repair because there was a bit of a damaged section there. But it could also be because I overlocked the seam. I can't clip in now and it's sitting. It kind of like pulls it a little bit on the one side. But otherwise, I mean, I got them for like 13 euros, the fabric from the skirt. So I think it's a bargain. I think they're brilliant and I'll enjoy wearing them in the summer months, especially in Venice next week. Super cool. Um, yeah, so I'll make the last changes and then I'll show you the final part. So I'm going to hem the shorts and I'm going to do just a simple, because I quite like the length they are. So I'm just going to do a very simple one fold and then stitch situation. And I'm just going to align it so that I'm folding under the stitch that we've got. See, this is the only problem I can foresee. It is the gathered amount from the zigzag stitch. I don't think there's anything a good press won't alleviate. And all I'm doing is just stretching out that overlocked hem. Because I didn't back tack, I'm just going to reverse stitching I already did. Almost like reverse gathering, <laughs> ungathering. So now I should be good. That will do. And that's a nice, simple hem. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed that. That took some editing to get that video down to just 40 minutes, which I still feel is a bit longer than it should be. But it was a refashion really project and it took a lot of pondering on what was going to work and what wasn't and what I wanted to do and what I didn't and actually in the end I didn't have enough fabric to make a separate top um because of the amount that I needed for the waistband I had to take that from the other half of the skirt and so anyway here are the shorts they're fabulous <laughs> I love them so much I think they're one of my favorite makes ever um I have changed the top stitching so you'll remember that actually the, I had made a mistake and I put it on the wrong way. I mean, it wasn't the wrong way, it was just inside out instead of outside in. So the white top stitching I've removed and um, now it is pink. I unpicked it that the other night. I also added in the extra long bar tacks on the side pockets to allow my hand to go in, but it's not gaping open so much. So overall i'm really happy with them i love them so much they fit really comfy they're nice and loose and airy around the legs so i don't feel like i'm either gonna get like too hot and sweaty they'll be nice when i'm walking around venice and it's really warm and i'm just really chuffed i have recorded some video of the before when i tried it on as a skirt and then after so i'm gonna add that now I'll leave you with that but yeah i just wanted to thank you again for watching don't forget to like the video just because it tells youtube that it's a good video and it's the best and easiest way that you can support me subscribe if you want to see more about pattern making fashion design garment construction and refashioning projects and yeah don't forget to hit the bell so that youtube notifies you when i post a new video i will see you tomorrow it's monday again so i will be continuing the learn to sew series so stay tuned for that 
And in the meantime, have a great evening. And thanks again for watching. Bye.